Hello, participants at the 2021 Arctic Knot Conference. Thank you for inviting me to speak at this very exciting event. My name is Linnea Nordstrom, and I work as the team lead for library communications at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway University Library. I know that we are taking part in this conference virtually, but I also want to acknowledge that Tromsø, Norway, where I am based, is a part of Sápmi, the traditional territory of the Sami people. I am going to briefly introduce the project Arctic Indigenous Languages and Revitalization, an online educational resource. The background of the project, the goals, and finally, some ways for you to contribute. The idea for the project came about in 2019 when we at the University Library produced an exhibition together with the Arctic Council Indigenous Peoples Secretariat to commemorate the 2019 United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages. The multimedia exhibition was called Saga Stalamin telling the story of Arctic indigenous languages. And it featured videos, audio, music, posters about the region and the languages spoken there, examples of language revitalization initiatives, and an overview language map of the Arctic. It opened in Tromsø in September 2019, and then traveled to Harstad, Norway, Rovaniemi, Finland, and Kautokeino, Norway, before COVID-19 made it difficult to display it further. We hope that it will be displayed at more locations in the future. While working on the exhibition, we updated a language map, which was originally made by the Arctic Council Working Group on the conservation of Arctic flora and fauna. This map was in turn influenced by work by Winfried Dahlmann from the Norwegian Polar Institute and maps by Grid Arendal. We realized, however, that we did not have the time and the capacity to work with the map as much as we would have liked to. We consulted with indigenous language experts and fixed some obvious errors, but knew that the map should really be worked with further. There were also some limitations to the print format, such as not being able to show overlap between language speaker areas. There were also inconsistencies in the map since some languages were listed in their indigenous names, but most were only in English. Ideally, we wanted to include both, but the design made this difficult to display without it becoming difficult to read. This is why we began considering transforming the map into a digital format and a GIS map, which would allow us to show information in different layers, to zoom in for more information, and to link to further resources. We also began to realize that there was a real need for a circumpolar indigenous language map, as we received many requests to use the map after the exhibition. We realized that good regional language map, maps exist, but few overview Arctic maps are available in the GIS format. There is a lot of data on Arctic indigenous languages, but this information is often not visualized on a map. So we applied for and received funding support from the UArctic project call for networking activities on Arctic research and education. The project began in January 2021 and will be completed during 2022. Since January, we have gathered partners from higher education institutions, government agencies, and NGOs in Canada, Finland, Greenland, Norway, Russia, and the United States. Unfortunately, I don't have time to mention them all individually in this presentation, 
but you can see all of our project partners and contributors listed on this slide. We have particularly strong partnership from Russia, and the project is therefore bilingual with live interpretation and translation between English and Russian. In addition, the Arctic Council Indigenous Peoples Secretariat is helping to facilitate permanent participant engagement in the project. Permanent participants are Indigenous NGOs, which are permanent members of the Arctic Council, an intergovernmental forum for Arctic cooperation. The goal of the project is to create a peer-reviewed overview map of languages spoken by the Indigenous peoples of the Arctic which can be used as an openly available educational resource. You can see the print exhibition map that we are using as our starting point on this slide. We hope to build a GIS data set, which will show indigenous language families and geographical distribution with color coding, indigenous languages spoken in the Arctic with names listed in indigenous names, English and Russian, links to resources on revitalization efforts, and other relevant information on linguistic theories, etc., as resources allow. The final data set will be visualized with a web application, and the data set will also be made available for download as an open access resource to support further educational use and research. One of the key points in the Saga Stalamin exhibition, which we also want to bring to the GIS map, is to feature specific language revitalization initiatives and tools being developed around the Arctic. Our hope is to include a wide range of examples for community-driven, institution-based, and technical tools that support language learning. The idea then is that the map can be used to find resources for language learning or as a networking tool for those who are developing a language revitalization initiative so that they can learn from the examples of others. This network building is something that we also hope will be a natural side effect of the project work itself, where we bring together linguists, educators, and indigenous language experts to work together on co-production of knowledge. We are in the early stages of our project work, and we have spent the spring discussing design options for the map and gathering resources we wish to include. We will be arranging a series of workshops for the project partners in the fall to decide on what to include based on partner suggestions and feedback sent in on the original exhibition map. The Indigenous People Secretariat has created a form on their website to collect feedback on the exhibition print format map. We are looking for further suggestions for more languages to add and help identifying errors that should be fixed. We would also welcome suggestions for interesting and innovative language revitalization examples from around the Arctic to feature on the map. I would like to encourage conference participants to have a look at the original map and to send us feedback using the form which can be found here, arcticpeoples.com slash arctic hyphen languages hashtag feedback. Thank you very much for your time and we look forward to receiving your feedback.